You've all seen Joe Rogan's stand-up special, right? You've all seen Joe Rogan's amazing Burn the Boat stand-up special. Quite possibly one of the best stand-up specials that's ever been released in the history of stand-up. And I'm standing by that. I think it's the best thing ever. I think Joe Rogan's the greatest stand-up that ever have lived in the face of the earth. And I feel like people are discounting some of the great things he's done in stand-up comedy in general. And I love Rogan. But I wanted to see what some of his friends, what some of his colleagues had to say about this stand-up special. Because I think a lot of them are capping and I think a lot of them are not telling the truth about what they actually feel like about the special because they're afraid. But I feel like if you're a comedian, you should be able to say what you feel, say what you like, say what you don't like, which is kind of the reason why, and I've got a very controversial opinion about this, this is kind of the reason why I don't really agree with other stand-up comedians shitting on people like Rogan, shitting on people like Brendan. I don't like it. I know it's funny for the Reddit, I know it's funny for us to laugh at and stuff, but I think it's kind of poor form when fellow comedians will shit on Brendan, especially now that he's out of the good graces of Rogan, I feel like if you were a fellow comedian and you were shitting on Brendan when he was still within the inner circle of Rogan, I give you props. But if you're shitting on him now and laughing at him now, he's the easy target. He's an easy whipping boy because he's not within that hallowed, protected field of Rogan anymore. Rogan lives in Texas. It all kind of moved and changed. But I feel like if you're in a business or stand up, you also have professional courtesy not to insult your fellow colleague. But I feel like if you insult Brendan, you have to also take the piss out of Rogan and his stand-up. But they don't do that. They pick and choose. It's easy to take the piss out of Brendan because he's terrible, but no one wants to take the piss out of Rogan because Rogan's Rogan and you want to get on his show, you want him to change your life, you want him to be your daddy, all this sort of shit. I get it. But there was a very interesting and very telling review, not review, from the one and only Joey Diaz on his podcast, The Check-In with Lee Sayat, which kind of told you everything you needed to know about how fellow comedians rate or don't rate the special. This tells you everything. Because with what Joey Diaz didn't say, he said more. Yeah, he said more by what he didn't say than what he actually said. This is Joey Diaz with his review of Joe Rogan's Burn the Boat special. It's fucking hilarious. I'm going to talk to you about the Rogan special. Because you know, a lot of people... I've already gotten like fucking 50 things of what I thought. <laughs> you know? I don't know if you watched it. Look, he's already, he's already not, he's already not looking forward to it. I don't know if you watched it. I don't know if you heard about this guy called Joe Rogan. He's like this small rinky dink up and coming comedian. You know, he's just started his podcast. He's only a few episodes, few thousand episodes in. He's not that well known, you know? <laughs> I don't know if you heard about this guy. <laughs> now, you haven't had a chance to watch it. Not yet, but I'm excited. <laughs> okay. Lisa hasn't watched it. That's Cap. I tried watching it. <laughs> I tried watching it. <laughs> Saturday Night Live. Okay. When it came on. You tried? But all the girls came up to the room. At okay. Like or the kids came up in the room. The fucking kids. fucking speakers and shit. The kids. And I had all these kids in the room. The my kids. wife, their parents. Oh, no. My kids. So I, I forgot they exist. And I was upset, but I got to watch it last night. Okay. The whole hour, relaxed, okay. the whole thing. So he had to, he had to have I a... I love the theater. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So he had to have a specific environment. Jerry Diaz, the master of stand-up comedian, one of the last people that was actually passed by Mitzi Shaw, I think, back in the day at the Comedy Store. One of the hallowed 1,000, a.k.a. 250 stand-up comedians out there worth bothering about. The Navy SEAL stand-up comedian, the best of the best, has to have the perfect environment to judge stand-up. Remember before when these guys were like, you can tell if somebody is funny just of what they say about this, how they talk, how they carry themselves, blah, 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 blah. But when it comes to Rogan and his special, they're all walking on eggshells and it has to be, you know, they have to, they have to, write, they have to light the right scented candle. They have to use the right hand wash. They have to have the, their favorite glass of juice. They have to have their favorite beer, smoke a little joint, have a little edible. Kids have to be asleep or comatose. Like they have to be all these perfect things to make sure that they viewed it in the best possible way possible. When everybody else just gets a flipping review. Huh, interesting. I think Thanks. Joe did a great job. Okay. Joe did a Was great it job. The best special I ever saw. I don't know. But it oh, you don't want that, right? Did you watch my stand up special? What do you think of it? I think you do a great job. You don't want anyone to say that to you. Anything creatively, anything artistic, anything to do with entertainment, 
you don't want anyone to ever tell you as a review you did a really good job you should be proud of yourself you don't want that you want to say oh my god that's amazing it's even better when someone says you know what i'm not normally into this sort of stuff but you killed it you want them to actually comment on the stuff that you did not to give you these vague generic platitudes about oh you did a really good job i can tell you worked really hard <laughs> you put a lot of effort into that oh joey diaz but it was a good special he made me laugh a couple times <laughs> a couple times in one hour and five minutes or whatever the runtime is a couple times in a one hour stand-up special to be fair to rogan too it's one hour and five minutes but he does go straight into the comedy. He doesn't waste time doing crowd work or fucking around. So it's basically an hour, 60 minutes of stand-up comedy and he made you laugh twice. Now, don't get me wrong. Jerry Diaz is also echoing my thoughts. Check out my review, my play-for-play, blow-by-blow on the Patreon. Actually, I might need to edit down some of my response, some of my reactions and just put them into a compilation, edit, upload on YouTube. But if you see my reaction to it, towards the end, I think I did say I laughed twice. My favorite joke in a special was the one him talking about um, how lesbians who think a strap-on is a real penis is like someone who thinks a lighter is like them being a dragon. And I think I laughed at something else towards the end. There were two jokes in there that I legitimately laughed at, but I don't think I even laughed at it during the reaction. I just laughed in my head. I was like, oh, that's a funny joke, which obviously isn't the best endorsement of comedy because they're meant to make you like, ha ha, hee hee. Your bellies are meant to be fucking aching and shit. You're meant to be crying. You're meant to be convulsing. You're meant to be heaving and hissing and, and wheezing like a pig like Burt Kreischer did. But Joey Diaz, the professional style of comedian, said he only laughed twice. Woo! I could see the work. And I know the work it takes. I can to do see the work. Oh no! I enjoyed it. I, enjoyed I didn't it. see anything negative Sunday, <laughs> but today I started reading the negatives. And okay, so he enjoyed it. For him, it was okay. For him, it was good. Two good jokes, and then he went immediately into reading the bad reviews. These guys are just as bad as us, huh? Because if it was me, and I'm Rogan's friend, people know this about me. When it comes to nut guzzling, when it comes to cock smooshing when it comes to anus licking if i like somebody i'm gonna ride hard for you i'm gonna be on my knees and elbows for you i'm ride or die there's some people on my list you know who they are demna the designer of balenciaga rick owings hiroshi fujiwara the godfather of streetwear nigo james jembia the founder of fucking supreme drake there are certain people you just can't talk bad about them around me. Now, these people have not done anything to me personally. They're not, I don't know them. They haven't given me a career. They haven't given me a house. They haven't put my kids through private school. They haven't taken me on tour. They haven't allowed me to buy a second house in Miami and shit. They haven't done all the stuff that Rogan's done for these people. But I just love the work that they've done and how they've contributed to my life. And you cannot say a bad word about them to me. But some of these comedians, everything that Rogan said about them, they still sit here and say, I read the bad reviews. If it was me, I would be riding hard, 10 toes down on that Burn the Boat special. Chatting the most shit. Best special ever. Better than fucking um, Eddie Murphy. Better than Chappelle. Better than everybody. Like, just going hard. Better than Louis C.K. Better than, I'll just be on it hardcore because that's my guy. But these comedians are so flippy floppy. They're so flippy floppy that even someone like Rogan that legitimately changed all their lives are not doing it to. Yo, big up, big up, NJ Ranger. Appreciate it, bro. Joey Kaka Diaz was too busy with yeah, Sammy Trips exactly. putting a hit out on the great Michael D. Red Bar. Good to see you back in action, though, big homie. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> Sammy Trips. <laughs> Why does that sound like a legit... You know what I saw the other day? Oh, big NJ Ranger. Great mind speaker like. I saw this like video of like the Sopranos. I think it might be like a documentary thing that they filmed ages ago when Joey Diaz was a bit fatter back in the day. And I was like, how the fuck did Joey Diaz get himself into the Sopranos thing anyway? Isn't he Cuban? What is this like? That's the only thing I never, I understand why he liked the show. I understand maybe the show kind of reflected a little bit of his upbringing and where he lived. But the fact that he kind of cosplayed as like an Italian guy and kind of liked the confusion and didn't really clarify that he was Cuban and not Italian and not Sicilian and shit. 
was really weird. It was like he, like he did really well. Like he was a really hardcore Sopranos fan, and he got himself on the show and made himself a part of the lore and shit. But it's kind of weird. It's like, bro, you, you speak Spanish. You don't speak, even speak Italian, you know. And the Spanish, the Spanish you do speak is like pigeon dialect street. You know, you know what I mean? It's like I don't know. I love Joey Diaz sometimes, but you know that that that's a little bit shameless. But yeah, big up NJ Ranger. Let's continue. I'm like, wow. And, you know, it's you're not going to make everybody happy. <laughs> not with the internet. You're not going to make everybody happy. But you know what's funny about the the response to Joe Rogan's special? You know what's funny about it? In my opinion, from reading the reviews that we've read on the fucking stream, in my previous live stream, remember, check it out, check it out. I think it's Small Man Syndrome Part 2. From the reviews that I've read, and you guys can actually agree with me, I don't think a lot of the people criticizing the special are even like outraged. It's not like the council culture thing. It's not like the woke people going crazy about the things that he said. No, it's just people actually questioning whether or not he's actually funny, questioning the merit of his stand up, questioning why he has such a big audience when it comes to stand up anyway, legitimately questioning the jokes. That's what I've seen. I've seen more people just trying to dissect the jokes like, why is this funny? Why does this seem like humor to Rogan? Why is he this big? I don't get it. Like, that's the kind of thing that I'm seeing. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. This guy's fucking terrible. Which must hurt more because it's easy to hide behind, oh, they're trying to cancel me. I can't say what I want. Freedom of speech is not a freedom of speech unless you let people that you don't agree with say the things that you don't, whatever. No, it's just people saying your special stinks. And that must hurt way more than people actually saying we don't like you because you took the piss out of this community, these people, da 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 da. And that's just the way the world is today. You know. And, and what? He, what is that? They're, they're mad at him for some of his jokes. No, I don't. I didn't. I, I listen. I've been home. I was home for maybe an hour. <laughs> I, 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 I left nine thirty. Uh, I didn't see nothing. I didn't see nothing. Bro, Joey Diaz knows that life. Joey Diaz knows that life. Like shh. I didn't say nothing. I didn't see nothing. I don't know nothing. I don't know. I liked it. Two good jokes. Rogan's my guy. <laughs> I came back here at one because Ari was going to meet me. So I wanted to run every errand I could, do a podcast. I had to do a ton of shit today. And I got back. I didn't see him when Ari was here. He was checking his messages. And I started looking at the computer and I asked him, I go, look at this shit. All of a sudden, there was nothing. And it was just a thing on Twitter that was, and then it disappeared. Oh, weird. It really didn't, didn't really matter. Yeah, exactly, King Bayo. I think I don't get it hurt so much as a comedian, especially these guys. Because with the Rogan thing, I didn't know it had been so long since just a special. I think it had been like five or six years since the last one. I didn't know it had been that long. But I guess because of COVID and him setting up the comedy club, it just made it a little bit more of a space in between. I think he, he could have easily recorded this ages ago, probably while she was opening the comedy st the mothership. I was actually surprised he didn't do his special at the mothership anyway, just to kind of promote it, fuck it, you know, as a thing. Um, I think he let Brian Simpson be the first person to record one there, but I was surprised he didn't record his one there. But maybe he wanted to do the whole theater thing and have it be a bit more worth his while, money-wise, I don't know. But either way, that's going to hurt way more. It's your first special in five to six years. You come back, you try and go the whole, like, council culture type of thing i can't say what i want pronouns lgbtq blah 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 sort of thing you try to do that whole boomer humor people just miss it and don't even give a fuck about being offended and you just say you're not funny that's gotta fucking hurt especially when they rewrite your jokes like kind of out of context and basically make them sound even more unfunny when they put them in quotes it's like <laughs> why are people laughing at this you're not funny it's like ouch matter but I think he did a good job. Uh, I saw him do his hour at uh, the mothership. And he was great. The, the enthusiasm, yeah, yeah. the enthusiasm between both of these guys. I get it; they're probably both high and shit, but still, the lack of enthusiasm. I saw him do the set at the mothership. It was great. The silences, Jesus Christ, man! Where's the fanfare? Where's the hype? Where's the love? Come on! And this is the thing that I have to say: if I'm Rogan, I'll be a little bit annoyed about, it. even though I don't think he's funny. And I think a lot of his fame has come because of the podcast, not because he's actually good at stand-up, which is not a bad thing. I'm trying to do that myself. I'm trying to use the 
fame and whatever little notoriety I'll get from the podcasting and those views. And I'm going to fucking segue that into the DJing. I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm going to use this fucking attention and fame into the DJing and fucking be on EDC stages playing fucking bullshit because people like, <laughs> people view my stuff and want to see me on other platforms. It's, it's the name of the game. It's no problem with that whatsoever. But if I'm rogue, I'm a little bit pissed because I've got the biggest platform in the world and you motherfuckers run after me. You're on my line. Because imagine Rogan's DMs. They must be nasty. Full of male groupies. And, and fucking hangers on and beggars. Asking and begging and pleading for handouts. With their hands cupped at all fucking times. He gets them on the pod. He lets them do a show. He lets them promote their shitty dates in fucking casinos. He lets them promote their fucking stand-up special. Right? They get on there and bang, bang, bang. But then when they get on their podcast, they don't even run cover for him. They don't even run defense from it. They just pretend it's all good. Big up Wingus McDingus. His voice is like he's delivering a eulogy. Exactly. Joey Diaz is guilty of non-laughter. Exactly. How did comedy go, Joe? Bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese, bean cheese. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Exactly delivering a eulogy. And usually Rogan at least fake pretends he's interested in your special. Oh, where's it streaming? Where's it going to be on? Blah, 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 blah. He is a little bit of hype. These guys aren't even running cover. They're not even running defense. Nah, man, I don't care. If I gave you your career... If I gave you a second house, if I put your kid through boarding school, you better lie and say everything I do is amazing. Get on your fucking podcast and tap dance for me. I don't give a fuck. You know, I mean, if I know him, he changed up a couple things like we all oh, do. Yeah. But I, I saw bits of it at the mothership. I would always go out <laughs> and somebody would talk to I me. I saw and bits. Then, Are you going up next to the other one? Yeah. So I don't really recall. Focus. I don't so recall. I would go out there for bits and pieces. Okay. Bits and I enjoyed and what he was doing. Bits and pieces. And it seemed like it went great from what I've heard. It seems like it went great from what I heard. These guys, man, come on. Pick up Bro, Austin Casey. I well, wouldn't have watched Rogan's special normally, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I watched your reaction review on Patreon. Yeah, and you yeah. Big up Austin Casey. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, brother. I'm actually going to do the. What, I'm actually going to take off all of my because I can easily do. It. I think on iMovie it's easy to do. I'm pretty sure I'll figure it out. I want to take away because every time I try and play the clips on YouTube, they Netflix with the copyright and the fucking notification, they are on it, bro. They smash you. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to clip all of my reactions to all the bits I pause and then put them for the compilation, upload them to YouTube. That should be okay. Just to send people so they can see what it looks like because I feel like you can see my frustration throughout the fucking viewing of the, of the special. But I'm actually going to do the worst thing possible also. I'm going to continue the series. I'm going to finish the series. I'm going to continue it. So after I come back from the gym, I'm going to watch the next special. I think the next one I have to watch is after, what is it? After 2001, isn't it? What's that one? Joe Rogan's other special in 2001. I think after that, let me see if I can find it. Because I'm going to do react to that on my Patreon. So that'll be part, that'll be part five of this. Or maybe part six. Whatever that part is, that'll be the one coming up. So that's going to be brutal to get through. But as per usual, um, big up my girl Amy for the advice. Whenever that was back in the day, she told me, and it always rings in my head. If you're going to diss, if you're going to laugh, you have to consume. And I have to put myself through this. I have to watch this if I'm going to diss it, if I'm going to laugh at it, if I'm going to point and laugh. You have to. That's what I'm going to do. So the next one I'm going to be doing will be Joe Rogan Live 2006. So I've already done I'm, I'm, I'm Going to Be Dead Someday. I've done Voodoo, Voodoo Punani. Those are two um, CDs. I've done Live from the Belly of the Beast. And the next one I'm going to be doing is 2006 Joe Rogan Live. Now, I'm personally, personally for me, as much as I don't like Joe Rogan's latest special, I was shilling and I was doing a little bit of tap dancing for Rogan myself. A lot of you guys called me out on it and said, no, Rogan isn't funny, bro. You are not remembering this well at all. Rogan isn't funny. And you've all been proven right. But there's a part of me that wants to prove you guys wrong. So I'm hoping within these last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven specials I have to watch from, from, from Rogan. I'm hoping within the seven left, there's going to be a funny one. I'm hoping, please, for the love of God, please. Because if, if, if there's at least one funny special, one legitimately, and I'm, I'm going to rate funny as this, to be fair to Rogan. I'm going to rate funny as this. And I think this is a fair barometer. I think you guys can agree with me. If I watch one of those seven specials left and I laugh more than five times, I think that's allowed to be special. That's allowed to be funny. If I laugh more than five, that's, that's a good. That's like an album. If an album's got 10 tracks and you like five of them, that's at least a seven out of eight, a seven out of 10 album. So I think that counts as a good special. 
So I'm looking for a special that can make me genuinely laugh more than five times. I've got seven to go through. Seven. Next one is Joe Rogan Live 2006. After that, we've got Shiny Happy Jihad 2007, which is an audio CD. Then we've got Talking Monkeys in Space, which is a CD and DVD. Then we've got Life of the Tabernacle 2012. Then we got Rocky Man in High 2014. Then we got Trigger 2016. Then we got Strange Time 2018. So hopefully within those group, there has to be. Please God. Because I wanna I wanna at least prove you guys wrong a little bit. Because I feel so ashamed that I was shilling and capping for fucking Rogan so hard when it came to his specials and shit, thinking it was funny, only to be proven that he wasn't. I'm sure he must have one, one special within his fucking discography. With any stand-up filmography, there must be at least one that's legitimately special. It has to be. It has to be. It has to be. Please. Please, Rogan. Please. Anyway, back to the thing. What do you think about, because they've done a couple of them, like, what do you think about doing a special live? Like, that's also, like, a crazy aspect of it, of it being, like, a one-take. Like, Oh, look at intense. these guys, man. Look at these guys. Now it's the medium. Now it's the platform. Oh, specials. Recording them live. It's a totally different beast, man. Crazy, man. The just Like, come on, bro. These guys spent years telling us that they were elite Navy SEALs level comedians that could com comedy and ha-ha-hee-hee on any platform, anytime, anywhere, any moment. Boom, they could do it and make everybody laugh. And now all of a sudden, oh, it's a live thing. I don't know about that. Bro. You're live every time you kind of do a podcast. You're live every time you're on stage somewhere. You pants all the time. There is no stage fright. You do it all the time. You have millions of specials everywhere. You do crowd work stuff. You're on your fucking Instagram live. You're streaming live on platforms. You've got podcasts. You do shows. You're going on tour. Come on, man. Come on. Guys, it's the future now. You know, I've always said... We needed to spice up comedy a little bit and look at Ari's storytelling show. Mm -hmm. It was a new realm for a long time. It was, a, it became a genre for about 10 years, and I capitalized on that genre. Yeah, you had a but bunch now, of great stories. Now nobody's doing it anymore. Don't get me wrong, that's a good point he made about Ari Shafir's storytelling show. I feel like we got two of the best bits. No, we got one of the best Joey Diaz bits and one of the best Rogan Brendan bits ever. Brendan's best ever bit ever was a bit that he told on Ari Shafir's, um, you know, storytelling thing. But I think actually the law around that is funny because I'm I'm pretty sure Brendan did Ari Shafir's storytelling thing on Comedy Central when Comedy Central kind of pushed Ari Shafir out when they were trying to kind of get him out and do it on their own. They didn't want to fuck with him too much. I think that's when he actually did it. So he didn't technically do it under Ari Shafir's tutelage. But still, that story that Brendan told on that show that was helped a lot by Burt. I think Burt kind of punched up that story a bit and helped him kind of construct it and make it seem, you know, interesting at least or entertaining to listen to. That was one of the best bits Brendan's ever done. And also Joey Diaz told a story too on there that was really good as well. Don't get me wrong. It's a great platform, great medium, great way to kind of do stand-up. But let's also be real. A lot of these guys shouldn't be doing specials. Now that I've watched Rogan's special, I now understand why Bobby Lee doesn't do stand-up specials. Because I think Bobby Lee realizes that his type of stand-up only works in person. It works when you're there in front of him, the physicality of it, the goofiness of it, and the fact that he repeats his jokes. Allegedly, he's been doing the same jokes for like 40 plus years and shit. You probably don't need to put that on a special, especially considering his sense of humor. You probably would fall flat. It would be very badly received. Everyone would fucking rip you a new one. So leave it. The special doesn't work for you. But I think in general, in general, probably less frequency especially because there was a time where a lot of these guys that's where the whole like maybe sets and reps thing came in right they'd get on stage they'd get on they'd pop up in certain clubs and do get and do material and do as many as possible in a night to try and you know um and tighten up their material but i also felt like they were approaching the same thing when it comes to specials they were trying to do that kind of like louis ck every year dave Chappelle every year specials like bro not all of you guys are built that way not all of you guys have a like that much you know, that much of a special in you to release every year. Some of you guys don't have much to say, especially the ones that have podcasts. Like, you speak probably too much. You probably give away some of your best material off the cuff without realizing. So maybe call the breaks on the fucking specials and maybe put them out a little bit more with a more delay. Maybe every five years might be a good thing. 
let people kind of miss you and then kind of go from there but the every year or the every other year thing was probably a little bit too much for these guys they don't have the comedy chops to actually do that i don't think so but again i could be wrong so now we're looking for other other avenues to draw people into stand-up you know entertainment's changing you know i don't know if entertainment's be changing three man shows it's entertainment's in two fault. years i, I don't know <laughs> what it's going to be. interesting you think it could change that much I think a lot of things could happen, Lee. I think a lot of it's things could happen. It's changing. is hilarious. Comedy's changing. Television's changing. Uh-huh. Movies are changing. Uh-huh. The way movies are shot are changing. The uh-huh. way they come out are changing. Okay. You know, uh, I would order a, a, a show for 12 episodes. Uh-huh. And if it did well, I'd put an order in for 26. Not anymore. Then they have the other deal where you shoot 10 episodes. And then you shoot 100 just to get syndication and you put the show out there and there's no art in that because what you're telling me is that you're shooting a hundred shows in no time to just get out there. Nobody's going to remember that show. Anyway, you get the point. Joey Diaz and Lee Syatt didn't really watch the special. They kind of did, kind of didn't. They um, Lee Syatt is, co- is, is saying that he never watched it at all. He hasn't watched it just yet. I think he's just afraid to say what he thinks. Joey Diaz says he laughed only twice. He had to have a perfect environment to watch it in. And then he only ended up laughing twice, but he actually did really enjoy it. He immediately read all the bad reviews around it. And just in general, I think a lot of these guys are shitty cheerleaders and shitty lapdogs for Rogan. I feel like they all kind of use... It's kind of like a one-way relationship in a way. They use him a lot, but then when he needs them to like you know run cover for him and run defense for him, they all come a cropper. They don't really do it. And I feel like if I'm Rogan, I'd be a little bit pissed off about it. You give these guys everything, you give them a life, you give them a family, you legitimately take them out from the pits of poverty, and they can't even run unapologetic balls to the wall defense for you? Nah, I'm not having it. I'm not fucking having it if I was Rogan. I'm not fucking having it. But maybe honesty is a good thing. Maybe being honest if you're these guys is a good thing. Who, blood, clot, knows?